Can you believe it? The longest year ever is finally over. Uh, so we have a look back at our favorite moments of 2020. We'll also be looking forward into 2021 and talk about what is coming up that's exciting us as well as talking through our own plans for the year. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on this too. Have you got anything planned for this year? Uh, so come and follow us on Space and Things 1 on Twitter or, or get involved at Space and Things Podcast on Facebook and Instagram and let us know. And thanks once again for tuning in and supporting our podcast. But right now, we hope you enjoy episode 18 of the Space and Things podcast. Oh my God. You're listening to the Space and Things Podcast with Emily Carney and Dave Giles. I'm Emily Carney. And I'm Dave Giles. And welcome to episode 18 of our podcast. And a happy new year to you all. Uh, this is a, a pre-recorded show. We recorded this directly after we finished recording episode 17. Uh, so, to, so that we could both have a little bit of a break over the holiday f- period. Um, but we, we do hope you enjoyed yourself uh, and had a good Christmas. So, Emily, I'm not going to ask you how your Christmas was because we haven't had it yet. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, mine it too. It was awesome. Mine too. I can't believe it. was be- the greatest. Can you believe that thing happened? I can't believe yes. that thing happened. I can't believe all the presents I got. Yeah. <laughs> Name a present. That thing I got. <laughs> yeah, that thing with the thing that came with the thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the stuff I got <laughs> that yeah. had mo- uh, money, hopefully. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully mo- hopefully cash money yeah hopefully all right i think i, I just ruined it no <laughs> not, not, not at all it. not at all so uh let's uh let's just crack on and talk about 2020 spacex dragon we're go for launch let's light this candle so i i don't think anyone needs to be reminded of how crazy this year has been <laughs> Uh, but amongst all the chaos, spaceflight has given us some constants. Uh, so we're going to have a little talk about some of the some of the highlights from 2020. I know we kind of covered this in episode one when we had a look back, and since then we've obviously covered a lot of the main events. But for me, I am never going to forget that first uh, Crew One demo flight with with Bob and Doug. That that was such a special moment. Um, I was going through my photographs of this year. I was tidying up my folders on Dropbox and going through all my uploads. And uh, my brother sent me a photo from that day of my nephews who are, who are five and six glued to the television watching the launch. And like, and, and they, they just loved the whole thing. And I got them the little dinosaur uh, that, that was used as a zero gravity indicator. Uh, and they loved it. You know, and... and I think there will be loads of kids who were able to watch that with some awe and excitement about what was going on. But me as a big kid, to see something, to see astronauts being launched again from from Pad Thirty Nine, when it, when the whole world was falling apart, was just wonderful. It was just what I needed. I was sitting here just having a big moment with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still get very teary when I think about it. Like I know that sounds. I mean, I've seen a ton of launches. I, I've lived in Florida pretty much, save for a few years, the whole of my adult life, you know? So mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of different launches. Um, but it was just, like you said, I mean, it was such a beacon of, of hope during a really terrible... It, it's been a rough year. I mean, just a terrible time for many people, um, you know, with this um, COVID that's been going on. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean... I'm not trying to sound bleak, but I really don't know a single person that hasn't been impacted by stuff happening this year in some way or form, you know, and um, just to, you know, see the space program continue. It was like full circle to me, you know, because I'd I'd seen the last space shuttle launch in 2011. And I remember at the time thinking, you know, wow, what's it going to be like when we launch again? you know, from the United States. And at first it was like, you know, okay, we've come full circle. We're launching again off U.S. soil. And then it was just like, I was just incredibly moved by, you know, despite this terrible year, we're moving on with something really positive. Yeah. And not only that, but I mean, SpaceX really knew how to do, how to do it. I mean, just with everything, with the suits, with um, the vehicle going to the pad, uh, with the incredible uh, uh, footage that was supplied to us from uh, inside the capsule and from the launch itself, yeah, 
I'm used to the space shuttle days when I was growing up where the footage was really like this high speed grainy film. Yeah. You know? And um to see it look just completely modern and you know, just completely new for me was very was very special. Yeah, I mean as we spoke about in episode one, the access that I felt like we had, you know, from the suit up room right the way through, you know, it, it really was it was quite overwhelming watching it all. I really did, you just got so sucked into it all, but they they really did get it right. They just got got mm-hmm. got got the whole magnitude of it that and the and the videos of with with the Apollo rocket and the shuttle going from thirty nine and then and then leading on to the fact that this was was the same launch pad. All those things. They it was it was just nice. It was just really nicely done, and it was when we needed it. We really just needed that. And and obviously we're space nuts, so we get it. But seeing so many people who weren't, the, or who wouldn't be necessarily self-proclaimed not space nuts or net perhaps into it at all, watching the live feeds and getting excited and getting excited about the possibility of seeing it in the sky and all that kind of stuff. It was, it was a talking point. Everyone was talking about it, and. It was frustrating for me that the next flight, hardly anyone was talking about the crew. The yeah. crew one, you know, the the the, the, the nature of uh, of the general public towards towards space flight. But um, hopefully that would that had a few more people simply because of uh, of Bob and Doug and, and that that whole mission. That really was just such a highlight. Um, and and of, of course there have been there have been other highlights, but. But that that really that really for me was it, you know. You and and I don't think we can that in terms of achievements. There's been plenty of great achievements. You can't can't underestimate the fact we've reached 20 years on the ISS. Uh, oh yeah. Ch- China bringing a sample back from the moon. Japan landing them, uh, bringing back something from an asteroid. NASA also touching an asteroid. You know, there's all these yes. different things that have happened. It seems to have culminated. As the years gone on, there's been more and more activity. I think it's because we started the podcast, but that's a whole other thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The second launch was a touching moment for me personally, just because it was the first launch that my niece got to see. Yes. Uh, she's 13 now, and uh, it was really special. Like, we went outside. It was a clear night, and uh, we went outside and looked towards the east from... And it was, oh my God, I'm about to tear up thinking about it just because that's exactly where I would go outside when I was a kid. Oh my God, I'm starting to get sad. <sighs> when I was a kid, I used to go out to the same spot to watch launches, like dead serious. And, you know, going to the same spot with my niece and my sister, it was just like, oh my God, like yes. it was so emotional for me. Yeah. It was like, I keep coming back to that phrase, you know, tur- you know, going full circle, but it really was like that because it's like, okay, now we're sharing it with somebody who's a little younger, who yeah. might be able to appreciate it, you know? So that was really special for me as well. There were a few, um, <laughs> the launch curse of 2020 was also a, a lot of fun, uh, but I think I've broken it. Um, I did see uh, one thing I'm really looking forward to. I think I'm jumping ahead of myself here. But uh, one thing that was really cool to watch at the beginning of the year, it seems like 20 years ago, the ESA Solar Orbiter, which launched, I think, in February. It was January or February. Yeah, early in the year. I yeah. um I watched that from my house because, yeah, I went outside and it was perfectly clear. And um, I watched that from where I was and it was so cool because I was like, wow, this is an ESA mission and I'm watching it from here. Like, that's really cool, you know. Usually when you think European Space Agency, you're thinking, okay, I got to go to French Guiana for this, you know? It's a little bit of a trip. And you don't go directly to French Guiana. I think you have to fly through Paris or something. So it's like, you know, I've looked into it, trust me. And um, so it was kind of neat to see that from here. But um, uh, in 2021, it's supposed to reach its uh, target which is the sun, um, and it's going to uh, image the poles of the sun, which should be, uh, I believe it's supposed to image the poles of the sun, which is going to be really cool. we have I don't think we've ever seen that uh, view for, from the sun before, and I'm like, I'm really excited. Like, I can't say I know a lot about it. That's very um, egghead territory. That's Ed Gibson's field. He probably could tell us about it. 
but uh, I've always been fascinated with solar science just because of, you know, Skylab. Yeah, I got to mention it. Um, <laughs> sorry, Dave is like rolling his eyes. He's like, this this chick again. No, but seriously, like um, I've always been fascinated with solar science just because it affects so much of what happens on our planet. And uh, I'm really excited to see what that one finds out. It, it seems boring to a lot of people, but I, I think it'll be neat to see what it images. And of course, when you're looking back over the course of a year, it's uh, it's important to pay your respect to those who we have unfortunately lost. And uh, we have lost a few of our heroes this year. We're Apollo 15 Command Module Pilot, Al Warden, uh, passed early this year. Um, and Skylab, the final Skylab Commander, Jerry Carr, also passed away. Uh, we covered that uh, in an earlier episode of our podcast. Um, but we also lost uh, Chuck Yeager, uh, which we mentioned a few weeks ago. He wasn't an astronaut, but he was a key part of uh, of the early space history. Um, and so was Annie Glenn and Rene Carpenter, who uh, who both passed away, um, wives of uh, John Glenn and Scott Carpenter from the Mercury days. And in, in Mission Control, we also uh, we also lost Apollo Ecom uh, Rod Lowe. So um, w- yeah, it's it, it's gonna happen all the time uh, now. We're gonna we're gonna lose a lot more. We've already lost so many, and we're gonna lose a lot more of our heroes and uh, and people that were involved in in the the um, in the early days of of space flight. And uh, it seemed, to me, it just seems so important that we we wrap these guys up and try and keep them as healthy as possible because we've still got we still need them. We still need to hear the, these stories. The ones we've got left have got that that important job to do of uh, of continuing to tell their story. Yeah, we're like, um, I oh, I'm not trying to sound morbid, but I think about this probably too much. Is that we only have three Skylab astronauts left and four moonwalkers? That's not a lot, you know. And I just. Uh, like I like you said, let's wrap them up in cotton, you know, and make sure nothing happens to them. Yeah, and and keep asking them to tell their story as well. Just just keep keep trying to hear more and more from them, and and, and try and get that out to more and more people because um, we love it. But we feel I feel that these people can inspire a hell of a lot of people as well. And they still they've still got a, they've still got a lot they can do, and a lot for a lot for us that they can do. Absolutely agreed. So. Moving on to uh, looking back, weirdly moving on to looking back at some more positive things. Uh, Emily, do you have any highlights from your blog or from Space Hipsters this year? Oh, wow. Um, I actually have quite that. Thank you for asking. Uh, I actually have quite a few highlights. Uh, Space Hipsters has reached almost 20,000 members. Fantastic. Um, so, which is pretty incredible. Uh, we we uh, just landed a uh, Facebook campaign, which is really incredible. So uh, Facebook is actually promoting us, which is a pretty big honor. And I know there are mixed feelings about Facebook in this world, mm. but it's really cool to have them promoting, you know, something we created. So I think yeah. that's really cool. As a writer, well, first of all, one of the the biggest highlight of the year, honestly, has been starting this podcast. I'm not just saying it. Uh, and I really thank you for asking me to start it because, uh, uh, it's been really incredible. Uh, I'm looking forward to more of it. I've been really excited to get into, you know, more speaking and podcasting. I like public speaking, but I'll be honest, I'm a very nervous speaker. <laughs> well, you, and I you, think you hide that very well. So thank uh, you. Um, I think I've well, I think I've over I wouldn't say I've overcome it, but I feel like I've gotten a lot more confident because of uh, experiences like this. So I have to say thank you very much. Uh, I'm very, uh, I'm very happy to be working with you. And God, I had a lot of good experiences this year uh, as a blogger. Uh, I did a few pieces that I felt were really well received. Like people were like, "Man, this is actually this is really good." Not that you know I was bad before, but I think uh, I sort of broke through, you know, a little bit to people who might have not looked at my work seriously before. Yeah, I don't know. My favorite thing, honestly, was probably interviewing. Well. I've interviewed a lot of people this year. Uh, I got to, through Space Hipsters, uh, we did a lot of Zoom meetings. We interviewed a lot of amazing people. I mean, it's really almost too much to mention. 
Um, we've interviewed a lot of astronauts. We've interviewed a lot of artists. We've interviewed writers. It's almost kind of overwhelming for me because I'm like, I didn't think in my life I'd be doing any of this. You know, yeah. <laughs> I just never imag- imagined as a kid I'd be doing any of this. If if you told me this 30 years ago, I would have been like, no, that's not going to happen. That, these people are like superheroes in a comic book. That's not going to happen, but <laughs> it's happened. I think probably the most surreal moment for me was interviewing Fred Hayes. Mm. <laughs> just because like, I remember as a teenager, I had Apollo 13 on VHS, you know, and um, I think when I was, you know, when the movie came out on VHS, I think I was like 17 or 18. And I think that summer I like watched it like over and over on my like, you know, on my VHS, <laughs> you know, wore thing. the tape out. <laughs> yeah, basically wore the tape out to the point where like it was warping, you know, I never imagined like 25 years later, I'd be interviewing, you know, the Actual. dude from the actual dude, you know, and uh, I call him dude. He's a uh, he's, <laughs> he's Fred. He's Fred Hayes. So I'm yeah. not. I'm not. But um, I never imagined in my life I'd be actually like interviewing this guy, you know. And I was really proud because um, my co-moderator for that was a uh, Lois Honeycut of Space Hipsters. We both did the interview. It wasn't just me. Um, but you know, our goal with that was to ask questions that um you know, about his career that nobody had like really thought about, you yeah. know, because um everybody knows about Apollo 13, you know, you can go and see the movie. It's pretty easily accessible. The rest of his career, you know, I mean, this guy was a test pilot. He was one of the best in his class. I mean, I think he, they literally ranked him like at the top. Yeah. And I don't think people hear about that a lot. And he also flew uh, the space shuttle uh, enterprise test missions, the approach and landing tests, which were really dangerous. Like, you couldn't have paid me to do that. I'm yeah. sorry. I mean, I don't think people understand how, you know, it looks easy. If you watch the videos, it looks really cool. But I think if people actually read about it, they'll figure out, you know, okay, these were risky as hell. Like, this was really like, you know, this had these had to be done like to the T. Like, just, so just being able to talk to him about those things that nobody had really, I think, had really investigated about him you know it was just just surreal like I, I i it seems like a dream that that happened yeah so um but i want i do want to say that our other interviews were in, were just as incredible just for me it was more of like a is this real moment you know like am i actually doing this because this is somebody i read about as a kid yeah you know? <laughs> yeah i think i i think i would feel the same <laughs> i think i would definitely be in awe of the moment and and, and it must have been hard to to you know try and stay in that moment and, and be professional as a result. Cause I think I would have, I would have lost it a little bit. It was hard to go to like work the following Monday. Oh, I mean, I, I know that imagine. sounds, yeah. no, that I can imagine just because like, you know, I was in kind of cloud nine and it's, and it's like, okay, you got to go back to the real world. And you know, I feel like I was in sort of a dream state for a week. Cause I was just pinching myself. Like, yeah. you know, Fredo, Fredo, I'm <laughs> talking like he's my buddy, you know, Fredo, me and Fredo, we hang out all, but um, no, Fred Hayes is a very nice person. I don't want to make it like he's an, he's not intimidating. He's very kind. So he wasn't, you know, it wasn't that he was intimidating at all. That wasn't it. It was more just like, I can't believe I'm actually interviewing this person because this was somebody who was like a childhood hero, you know? Absolutely. So yeah. that was, it was hard to come down from. <laughs> Okay, I'm not <laughs> yeah, not surprised at all, at all. I think, yeah, as I said, I would be, I would be in the same the same mindset completely. Stand by one. Yeah, I got him with the uh, Kevin reprint valve in there, Jack. Every time he does that, our heart, our heart jump in our mouth. Some of my favorite things that happened this year was to do with the anniversary of Apollo. Apollo 13, the 50th anniversary of that mission. And there was, we talked about this earlier in in episode one, but there was some really great events uh, to mark that. And obviously at the time the world was in lockdown. So uh, having those online events and doing the Apollo 13 real time thing all at the same time, that was, that was, a, that was a nice week. Again, a bit of hope in the darkness for me. That was, you know, yeah. it, it, in that second month of, of lockdown, that April, um, having that to distract me was really wonderful. Um, and, and, you know, seeing the, you know, the, 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 the event that the San Diego Air and Space Museum did with, with, uh, Milt Windler, Glenn Lunny, Jerry Griffin, Gene Krantz, 
and Fred Hayes and Jim Lovell all on the same same Zoom chat was just delightful, and uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. So, yeah, twenty twenty is it's been fun. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's been interesting, but you know, it's amazing how we how we've space flight has continued to give us those those bits of hope that we need, and it still has even right up till Christmas uh, with the the great conjunction with Jupiter and Saturn coming together. Everyone was looking up and, and waiting for that moment, uh, and uh, those little things really can bring everyone together. And with all these great things that have happened this year. I'm hoping that it means we're going to have a pretty good 2021. Yes, I think we will. I think we will. So obviously we still don't know, yet know when the world is going to going to reopen properly and and things are really going to going to start being normal um in terms of events and things. Um but you know, it's a lot to look forward to. We've got a Mars landing coming up in the, in the next couple of months. Yeah, we do. Um we have a Perseverance rover that launched yeah. uh, that launched this last year. And uh, got off to a good start. Well, we do have Perseverance um, making it to Mars on February 18th, which is uh, the reason why I remember this is because it's a day before uh, I turned 43. Okay. So it'll be a birthday gift, hopefully. Lovely. Yes. Hopefully. Um, fingers crossed. But um, And it also carries the um, helicopter, small helicopter named Ingenuity. I'm really excited. So cool. This is going to be really cool. Like, we're going to have. A uh, little helicopter, a little test experiment. I remember when Mars Insight landed. Like the first thing they usually they the spacecraft usually sends back like an image, like a test. You know, hey, I made it. You know, image. And um, I'm excited to see that because I'm just whenever you see that, you're like, oh my god, we're on Mars again. Like to me, it's so magical because that's not an easy um, place to land on. Um, yeah. Like I think we've discussed this in past episodes. Um, there have been many Mars missions that did not make it, <laughs> yeah. that crashed or um, did not, that went past Mars or didn't quite get there. And um, it's really hard to make it to Mars. So um, I'm I'm hoping and I have my fingers crossed that uh, Perseverance will make it with no problems. I have faith. I have faith it will. It will certainly set, set the tone for the year if that happens, wouldn't it? Yeah, I have faith it'll make it fine. But um, I think JPL are pretty good at this stuff. So I think they'll do just fine but um yeah and i'm I'm excited to see this uh helicopter in action i want to hear more about this yeah because it's so new as well like we've had ro- we've had a rover we've had probes before on mars we've seen those photos we've kind of got an idea of what that looks like we haven't got an idea of what it's like just to float around above the surface and and that's going to be something so completely new and and we'll inspire like you'll get such a better idea of the views and all that kind of stuff it's it's going to be special that's like, if, if we if we look forward that is definitely something to, that's going to be interesting for this year yeah a mars drone i'm like are you kidding I know. me that's I freaking know. awesome it's i am- mean so- it's amazing like i like drones like i don't fly drones or anything but um i love watching like aerial i mean i'm a loser i'm one of those people um, in the united states we have the smithsonian channel and they have a show called Aerial America. It's very dry, but I like to put it on sometimes like if I, you know, if I just need to chill or something like that, like if I'm like I'm stressed out, I need to put something on that's just you don't have to think about. And um that show has like sort of drone footage of like different cities and stuff and I love oh, watching nice. it. Just because it's beautiful. I mean, it's aesthetically gorgeous to look yeah, at yeah, because yeah, yeah. and especially during 2020 where it's like you haven't been able to go yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm flying. You know, you feel like <laughs> I know. I mean, I think I did a picture. I oh my god, why am I mentioning this? I'm never getting hired by anybody again. I think a few months ago I got bored and I did a picture of myself and I put on my aviators and I and I got and I did a selfie by my TV and it was like the Aerial America Arizona edition. And I took a picture and I'm like, guys, I'm flying to Arizona. And it looked like I was on a plane, like flying a plane. And I had a headset on. Amazing. Like I was, you know, like I was a pilot or something. And my friends are like, you're a dumbass. Like, why did you? What? Like a few people were like, that's really funny. And then like everybody else is like, you're just stupid. And I was like, but I was like, dude, I'm flying. Like, that's how bored I got. I was like, I need to, I'm, I miss flying. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know why I told this story. Oh my no, god, that's, that's wonderful. 
Oh, it's wonderful. But, you, but you're right. <laughs> Drones are cool on Earth. They're going to be even cooler on Mars. Yeah. So that's that's why I'm excited. I really am excited about that. Fantastic, sports fans. It's trench time and market. Copy that. We, we kind of got a, a preview of this as well. We're going to have further developments with other new rockets. There's, a, there's plenty of new rocketry going on this year. I think we're going to see quite a lot of exciting new things uh, and, and test flights and all kinds of stuff. So, um, I mean, this this last week, they've been doing some more testing on the core stage of SLS. They're still saying that, sorry, that's the Space Launch System, which is um, NASA's uh, heavy rocket, which will hopefully be taking, um, taking us back to the moon. And... They're saying that the first test flight's still going to be some point in the next year, which is going to be cool. We've still got all the Starship stuff and the progress being made by by uh, SpaceX on that. Uh, Blue Origins are going to be be launching some new spaceships this year as well. So there's a lot of cool stuff. Astra have come out of nowhere, and I think there's going to be more little startup companies like Astra who seem to have appeared this year start appearing. So I think there's a lot of lot of that stuff going on, which is quite exciting for for this year as well. Yeah, I'm really excited to uh, see that. I am uh, awaiting or looking forward to uh, progress with SLS. I'm hoping when that goes up eventually, I'd like to go see it because I've never yeah. seen a, I've never seen anything that large leave the Earth. Um, I was not around for Saturn V, so to see that would be pretty awesome. Uh, we'll see. I don't know if it'll be the uh, big, huge SLS or if it'll be a, a smaller version. I'm yeah. not sure, but uh, whatever it is, I'd like to go see it. Um, I still would like to see Falcon Heavy. Uh, I've oh, never absolutely. seen one of those up close either. Well, um, there's one scheduled for next year, I think, isn't there? I believe so. Yeah. So that we've got that as well. The third, the third Falcon Heavy flight. I'd like to see that. I've never seen one of them. Uh, I w- I should have gone and seen the first one, but I was stupid because I was like, oh, it's not going to go. It's going to get scrubbed. Reverse curse there. Um, <laughs> it's going to get scrubbed, so I'm not going to go see it. And then, like, a few hours later, my friends are blowing my phone up. And I'm like, what? And they're like, dude, look at this. And it was Starman. And I'm like, that's a Photoshop. And they're like, no, <laughs> nope. it's real. And I was like, oh, my God. And then I had to go back and look at everything. So I really should have seen the first one. So I'll be darned if I'll miss this one. Um, I look forward to hearing your reports on that. That's for yeah, sure. Um, obviously, that's hopefully if everything has um, abated <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, abated by then. Which leads me on to the hope that that something like Space Fest can happen next year. I really hope that can happen for for you in particular, because I know it's a big part of your year. Uh, It's a real highlight for you. I would love to get out as well next time it happens. I'm really hopeful to be able to try and come across across for it uh, and and experience that. I'm not. I think if it happens next year, I might not. might not be open for international travellers. I'm not sure. We'll see how the world pans out. If it happens in July, it may it may still be too soon uh, for for international tourists. I'm not sure. Uh, obviously, no one really knows these things, but I can yeah. keep my fingers crossed because Space Fest looks a lot of fun and I really want to experience it soon. Yeah, I am hoping that uh, Space Fest uh, does happen next year. Um, it'll be, it'll be kind of different um, if my friends from... You know, international. I, I'm not trying to be depressing, but I, I have a lot of friends who travel from overseas to come see it yeah. um, normally. So it'll if they can't come, it'll be a it'll be different. Um, but we'll see. Like I said, we'll we'll see. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Um, there's a lot of other events that um, I don't know if they're going to happen yet next year. But if they do, um, I would like to see them. Uh, the Oshkosh show, um, EAA. I. I think that happens once a year i'm hoping to go see it next year if um nice. if, uh, things go as hopefully you know as we hope i don't know if the nss is having the um, international space development um conference next year yet i don't think they've landed on a date yet but i was hoping to go to that event this year before it got canceled so we'll see if there's anything in the works next year for that um yeah, everything's still kind of very much in the air, but um, I- I'm hoping that we'll have some events to look forward to, at least starting in the summer or fall. So we'll see about it. Um, I would just like to go back to Kennedy Space Center again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My annual pass has, uh, has expired, and I really need to renew it, but since COVID's happened, I haven't been over there. Yeah. So um, I would really just like to go back there again and um, really... I would like to go visit like more different space centers next of year course. if I could. 
if I could. I saw I was able to get out and see, um, as we talked in previous episodes, the uh, U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville. And that was amazing. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm hoping to go there again eventually. So I have a lot of hopes for next yeah. year. We'll we'll see. Crazier things have happened. Maybe maybe things will get better. I'm I'm hoping. I'm trying to stay positive. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I it feels weird having in 2019 seen every single command module and and spaceship. I've gone a whole year without seeing one. <laughs> I'm getting withdrawal symptoms of standing in front of empty tin cans and uh, even though there's, there's one in London I haven't been able to get to the science museum all year either so I'm hoping I, I'm hoping to be able to do that it's going to be an interesting year because we've got a few anniversaries coming up as well we've got the, the 50th anniversary of uh, Apollo 14 and Apollo 15 uh, in, yes. in 2021 it's kind of going to be the year of Alan Shepard because it's the 60th anniversary of of his first flight his first Mercury flight and obviously the very first Yuri Gagarin flight a 60th anniversary is is quite something uh, and and that will be in April so I I don't know what what will happen there or whether that will be marked um at all I, I hope so and it still feels like we've got to celebrate the Apollo 13 stuff I mean there's all the rescheduled events from that I don't know if they're they'll end up going ahead but um, there could be a lot if if this vaccine gets administered quick quick there could be a lot of fun things going on this year yeah let's let's hope and pray that um, that happens and that you know we get this all behind us so we can uh, look forward to going out and you know meeting actually meeting people again would be nice so oh, abs- I miss that <laughs> Absolutely. That's been the hardest part of this year for me is not, you know, it's been nice having Zoom meetings. It's been nice doing the podcast. You know, I don't want to take credit away from those things because those things have been really awesome. And they've offered a respite, you know, like, okay, we're seeing each other remotely. So that's good. That's better than, you know, nothing. But it'll be nice to, you know, catch up with people in person again. Yeah, actually sit there and have a beer with someone or a coffee yeah. and, and just just chat. Just yeah, talk. exactly. Feel free to, uh, to to change the subject if you're not ready to talk about this. But you mentioned to me last week that uh, you you are starting a new blog this year as well. Is that correct? Yes, I am. Um, I am starting a new blog on Medium. I haven't really settled upon a name that I like yet. Um, <laughs> I have a, I have a working title for it. Um, it's basically I'll tell the working title at the end because it's pretty goofy. But I was thinking, you know, there's so many things. There's things I'd like to write, and um, this space available is my blog on the National Space Society blog roll, and uh, I love the NSS. But there are things that I would love to write that don't really fit under the this space available remit yeah, yeah it doesn't yeah, really yeah. fit under it because um it's not really related this space available is about space history mainly um, yeah. there are things that you know i would like to write about that don't have anything to do with might not have much to do with space history or might tackle other issues um this year has kind of awakened my my inner space so to speak <laughs> you know i've been um noticing you know it's kind of hard not to notice um, in the United States, it's been kind of a period not of just, you know, coronavirus, but uh, of social upheaval as well. And it sort of awakened me to certain things that I wanted to write about. So yeah. uh, I am starting a- another blog that uh, will talk about more of these things. And um, so far, the- <laughs> this is a terrible title. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not because uh, I'm the queen of awful titles for stuff. <laughs> um it's called the making of an ex nuke. Nice. And it, well, it's plagiar. It's blatantly plagiarism. Um, <laughs> I ripped it off. Let me explain for people who are not aware. Um, Brian O'Leary is a former U.S. astronaut. A uh, former. I emphasize that massively. He uh, he is now gone, but he wrote a book in 1970 called "The Making of an Ex Astronaut," and I love. I am obsessed with this book. Um, he is a total mess in the book. Um, it is one of the messiest biograph or autobiographies and memoirs I've ever read in my life, and I'm obsessed with it because he just doesn't. It's like he just I don't know what he. It, it I don't know. I just love it. It's such a mess to read because you're like this guy is a mess, but I you just I'm here for it, you know. <laughs> so uh, I'm obsessed with that book. So I was like, 
well, I'm going to rip off of it and make it about my life. The making of an ex-new. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. Because it's because the, the thing is, it's a good title because it, it, it's it's something that means a lot to you, so therefore it works. Yeah, I think I think you should keep it. But by all means, if you if you feel like you come up with something which is even better, do that. Yeah, if anybody can find that book, I think it's now very expensive. Um, I don't know. Probably I don't know if it's because I've written about it a lot, but uh, I actually enjoy <laughs> this book a lot. Not everybody likes it. Brian O'Leary was not a popular figure <laughs> for many reasons, but uh, I love this book, so I'm like, well. I, I don't know. I'm going to rip it off. It's a good hat, <laughs> hat tip to, towards that. And uh, Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. It definitely makes sense for you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what, what you come up with on that. And uh, I will definitely be uh, be reading all your articles and, 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 and good luck with it uh, as well. Thank you very uh, much. So launching something new is always... Uh, it's always difficult uh, yeah. and uh, exciting at the same time, um, as yeah. as we have found out with this. And and uh, I think that's one of the things I'm looking forward to most in 2021 is to see what we get up to. I mean, it it seems crazy to me that we've been doing this for four months already. Uh, yeah, uh, you know that's a third of a year, and and it's, who knows what we'll do over the next year. But I, you know, hopefully we'll get some great guests on, and for me, continue to learn new things. Uh, and be exposed to new things, but also what what uh, surprised me with, with all this is already I've made some new friends just from doing it. You know, yes, they're all internet friends and uh, friends, um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's great, and and, and I, I appreciate everyone who's made the effort to try and get to get to know me uh, th- through what we're doing. Uh, and uh, I, hopefully that will continue. This will continue to grow, and we'll, we'll we'll continue to get better at it as well. You know, we're no by no means the, the finished art, article here. It, I'm excited. I'm just excited because I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, do with it. And and, and it's, I think it'll it's already, be awesome. Yeah, it's already come on so far, and, and we've 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 achieved a lot of cool things. So once we've had this little little break for our holidays, I'm looking forward to sitting down with you and and planning out what what our targets are for the year and uh absolutely and what we can try and do and as I said, if I can make it if space fest happens and we can both be there or and we can try and do a few things around you know that once the world goes back to normal in some ways this this podcast becomes a whole different kettle of fish, the idea of taking it on the road or or, or, or yeah. you know doing things in places and not not just doing it on a zoom call all the time um yeah you know I, i'm looking forward to where we can take this yeah i'm really looking forward to that because i'm looking like i said you know I, I i usually go to kennedy space center several times a year it's not very far from where i live you know it's about an hour and a half drive you know it, it would be nice to just take you know take it on the road maybe go interview somebody there you know about yeah. some program you know just something would be nice you know I, I'm hoping in 2021, you know, I'm hoping we'll start to resume that. I don't know how far we'll get into it, yeah. but um, it would be nice it's, to just, we can actually start thinking about that. Exactly, exactly. I, th- I believe they're doing, there's a new exhibit opening soon at Kennedy Space yeah. I believe they're building something. Yeah, they're building something. Apparently they're going to be announcing soon. There's definitely, a, they've, they've already got a new rocket in the rocket garden as well. Yeah, the Delta. Saw that. Yeah, which is yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, that's a beautiful rocket. I think I think that's probably enough, isn't it, Emily? Have you got yeah. anything else you wanted to talk about? Anything else? No, no, I think I'm good. Same. <laughs> Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year, Chris. That's all we've got time for this week, and we'd like to wish you all the happiest of New Year's. And let's hope that this year is a good one. Yep. Yeah, and uh, as discussed, uh, starting this podcast this year has been a bright spot for us. And, uh, and we hope that it continues for years to come. Uh, so thanks for being a part of it. And w- whether you're just a silent listener or whether you engage with us on social media or if you donate some money to us or bought some merchandise or sign up to our Patreon, it means a lot to us. And, and we're having a great time. Uh, and we hope that you continue to come on this journey with us. Thank you so much to all of you, uh, from both of us. And please remember, in space, no one can hear you stream. Space and Things has been brought to you by And Things Productions.